Hi there, welcome to my writing story from Absolutely Terrible 2. Not bad. My writing story is more of a horse story. So I've been around horses since I was young enough to be in a pram getting kicked. However, my parents are not horsey at all and I have a neighbour to thank for exposing me to horses because she was actually my babysitter. My neighbour actually had horses and one of her horses had a fox. So remember that little chestnut face and leave a comment at the end of the video on who you think this is. So I got my first pony at four. So this is him. We have no idea what breed he was. We think he was like an Australian pony or something. Well, anyway, he was uh, four as well. I think he was the same age and his name was Stormy and he bucked everyone off. He was so naughty. I don't really remember him. All I remember of him was that he was scared of my rainbow gumboots. The things that you remember at four, right? So anyway, we stopped leasing him because he was a lease pony because he was bucking everybody off. So not ideal for a four year old girl and a six year old boy. So my brother and I didn't really have horses. So we just went on sort of trail rides every now and then. Um, and because our, our neighbor was our babysitter, we hung out with her show pony. The show pony was an Arabian mare named Marnie. So when I was 11, my brother and I actually became horse mad. So we were actually given this Arabian cross Welsh mare named Shah. She was very, very old and she needed a home. So she was a free pony and we got her and I started learning to ride off my neighbor, which was really, really helpful. Um, Shah was very cheeky. We love to jump and gallop around. You can see from this picture here, like how sassy she was. She'd seen everything. We don't know if she was 22 or 32, but she was so much fun. Um, once my brother was cantering on her and she just cantered off with him and like went straight over to the feed room and like stuck her head in and like stopped dead and he like nearly fell off. He did it. And he has not ridden <laughs> a horse properly since that day. And I think that was back in the 90s at some point. Uh, Shah was my best friend. I didn't really have many or any friends when I was that age. I was going through a lot. Um, the One of the friends that I did kind of hang around, she actually passed away. So I was a bit of a sad kid and Shah was like my best ever friend. And when she started dropping weight and collapsing, getting her hip locking in the paddock and she couldn't be ridden anymore, it was absolutely heartbreaking and my parents actually told me that they were going to take her to a retirement village and I was digging around in the fridge to give her a carrot to say goodbye to her because she was going to a retirement farm and my mum said sorry I was put down this morning yep bye I'm going to work um yeah it was very very sad because I didn't even get to say goodbye <laughs> Getting emotional now, even all these years later. She was a good pony. Um, you can probably see I have a thing for chestnuts with blazers by now. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Woo, okay, I've collected myself. So this horse here is also a chestnut with a blaze. <laughs> this is Abby. Abby was a 15-1, six-year-old Arab cross porter horse mare. Uh, a really foolish buy because she was so green and not what I needed at that time. I had her for two years and my riding went really backwards. Uh, she was cheap. She was $900, you know. My parents were not wealthy. Um, so, you know, Abby reared up, uh, fell over backwards and broke her saddle. So that was it. We couldn't have a saddle. So I had to do all my riding bareback, which was a lot of fun, but also not great. But... It does kind of show that I really did love riding, even if I was too scared to trot at that point. I was just doing all my riding backwards. I'd gone from jumping a meter with Shah uh, with just a rug and halter on to being too scared to go really past a slow trot with this horse. So we, well, my parents actually decided to sell her and I was without a horse for quite a few years. So I was out of horses until... Well, this is what my mum said until I could get a job and pay for them myself. So obviously I had to finish school before I could have enough money to work um, to, well, 
to work to get enough money to have my own horse. And around this time, guess who was born? Montana, aka Moo. So this was him as a baby. He was born November 16th, 2003. I almost um, pressed stop recording here because I forgot to even mention that he is the son of Marnie, which is my neighbor's show horse from before. So yay, I, this, is, this is where the story starts coming together, guys. So anyway, a few years go by and I start to ride Marnie because my neighbor had a baby, just like Marnie did, and needed some help working her. And it was during this time that I had my first ever official riding lesson, guys. <laughs> Bit behind the eight ball. I also took Marnie to some shows. And this is Timmy. Where we kept Marnie, uh, it was like a race place, so we had lots of thoroughbreds there, and I fell in love with thoroughbreds at this point, especially this particular boy. I rode him, cuddled him, like it was him and Marnie, like he was such a spunk, I loved him. And I just kept riding Marnie and taking her to competitions. Here's my first video, woohoo. Oh, it's so cute. We even won. It was around this time that I started to want my own thoroughbred and I got this boy and he was just a lease horse, but he was so inappropriate for me. He was so dirty. Um, this is the first time I've ever actually been scared on a horse. Like he used to be so bad. I was just too inexperienced for him and that made him nervous and he would just blow up. It was not great for me. And that love of thoroughbreds that I developed when <laughs> I met Timmy uh, just evaporated when I had this horse Hun. He was not a Hun. He was, um, yeah, he turned me off thoroughbreds altogether and I vowed to never ever have one. And I was actually petrified to ride anything over 16, or well, even 15 hands really. Like I was a bad rider at that time, so that didn't help. So <laughs> something to learn from him was to never ever overface yourself ever, 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 ever again. So I did lots of shows with little Marnie. Marnie was 14 one, she was very petite and I felt very safe riding her. Uh, this day as well, I actually went and met baby Montana. It was pretty much unhandled after he was weaned. So yeah, that was him. And I decided to buy him. <laughs> oh, this is me, Marnie jumping. Isn't she cute? She was such a good girl. Uh, but I lost my confidence with her as well. We jumped about grade three back then, which was about 70, 75 centimeters. Not big, but pretty big when you're on a jumpy Arab. And this is Moo when he was broken in. Look at me, I'm like so in love. <laughs> Look how gangly he is. Oh my God. Yeah, I just loved him. He was my baby. I had to get him retrained because he was so um, bad at steering. Just look at his face. Riding a green horse makes you so unbalanced and I'm so thankful for that experience. Like that was him just checking on a puddle. So we eventually improved, slowly improving there. And I started taking him to competitions. And he just got better and better and he still continues to improve. Started placing even further up. Started jumping. He was always so bad at jumping. We would stop and cat leap everything. We got eliminated every time. So then I moved to Turidan Estate because I was at university at this point and needed somewhere cheaper to keep him. Um, so that turned him into the cross country legend he is today. And I went around a show jumping course and just finished and bleeding my eyes out. And that was actually his first ever horse trials and he won it. He went from not jumping to being an absolute gun. Unfortunately, in 2015, 
while I was away at a two day event competing with Moo, uh, it was cold and Marnie passed away of colic. But a positive would be is that I actually reconnected with Timmy, who had been sold and sold and sold and sold and sold and sold through the years due to his unsoundness. And I took him on just looking after him for his owner. And I, I did lots of trail riding on him, took him to adult riders just for a few lessons. Um, he was just so fun. <laughs> I love that his head is like almost as big as my whole body. He he regained my confidence in big horses again because he was he was about 62. And I believe it was fate that we got to be together again. So anyway, I kept competing on Moo. He was doing really well with horse trials. We were having so much fun. Cross country was definitely his strength. Just look at him go, the little pocket rocket. Um, but then unfortunately, Timmy got Australian string halt really badly. He was actually Part of a special case study with Melbourne Equine. It's really painful to watch these back. I haven't actually watched videos of him trying to move for a very long time. So while Timmy was locked up in a yard, uh, I was still doing horse trials with Moo and having lots of fun and hoping that Timmy would get better, but well, you'll find out. <laughs> uh, this is his PB of 77%. I love cross country. I miss it so much. And Timmy had to be put down May 7th, 2016. He just got down and refused to get back up. So it was recommended that we let him go. I was almost finished university at this point. So I started working at a riding school and for a dressage rider. And this is Balzac. Balzac, not Balzac, <laughs> Balzac, who's a Grand Prix um, gelding from Germany that I just loved. And this was my favorite little pony to teach on. His name was Pavlova. Isn't he cute? So I was really, really enjoying working with horses and obviously riding Montana all the time. It gave me a lot of confidence and reinstilled uh, this passion that I had and ambition. And I decided to my next horse, which was Holly. She was my first off the track thoroughbred. And that's what she looked like when I first bought her. And off the bat, she showed a lot of potential for dressage. And she actually made me look like I could ride, <laughs> which was really, really good because Montana always had a habit of making me look hopeless. <laughs> uh, but Holly was just really, but Holly was really uh, suited for the dressage. So I left my winning eventing discipline I love it. And started concentrating on dressage. So this is Holly's walk to canter changes, just just because it's cool. And at the moment, we are currently competing at Novice, and I'm looking forward to competing more in T21, hopefully when she's feeling a bit better. And maybe I'll get out on Moo for a few comps. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.